My name is Richard, last name Burgess. I'm a sadist. I enjoy hurting people. My YouTube channel's Vegan Gains. I'm a vegan animal rights activist. The only use I can see getting out of you is cutting your fing skin up and turning you into my new fing wall. And that's what most of my content centers around, but I also do health and fitness and political stuff and social issues. I just want to put my foot through the fing thing and step on it until it's nothing but blood and pulp on the fucking pavement! Got a sack of potatoes here? Do potatoes contain corn? You would make me fucking feel a hell of a lot better, you piece of shit. Yeah, but that doesn't, that doesn't have- Glad the guy's dead. One less animal abuser left alive. Tell me where the fucking corn is. It's hard to find a group more universally mocked than vegans. If you look almost anywhere on social media, you'll probably come across some sort of meme or video poking fun at them. And for good reason, because a lot of these dudes are pretty funny. Ain't nothing like a good salad. I said, ain't nothing like a good salad. <sighs> hey, I'm vegan. Many people see them as pretentious overreactors to a relatively trivial issue. Groups like PETA haven't helped this reputation in any way and have actually done the opposite from what they regularly post on social media and what they've done outside of social media, like abducting people's dogs. Vegan YouTubers, to their credit, have worked to challenge and dismantle the prevailing narrative that's built up that vegans are annoying over the years. One man trying to spread the vegan lifestyle is Richard Burgess, also known online as Vegan Gains. Richard has gained quite a reputation over the years for his unwavering dedication to promoting a vegan lifestyle. His journey into the world of veganism began back in 2015, and since then, he's gone to great lengths to showcase the advantages of this dietary choice, albeit sometimes employing rather unconventional methods. I fucking hate children. They literally make me sick. When I see babies in a commercial, I start to gag and almost throw up, and I have to look away and mute it. From laughing at his grandfather dying of a heart attack, to getting into actual real-life confrontations with other vegan YouTubers, supposedly making fun of a kid who was dying of cancer, and even having short feuds with massive creators like Leafy, Grade A Under A, Onision, and Moist Critical, it's fair to say he's an abrasive personality. Did you see Andrew Tate is claiming to have lung cancer now? Hopefully. As a result of this, many have called Vegan Gains a clout chaser, someone who starts drama with larger creators with the sole purpose of getting attention for his own selfish gain. They say he makes vegans look bad as a whole. They say his crude, distasteful humor, even going to the point of mocking the recently deceased because they ate meat, is bad. But I've always found Vegan Gains fascinating despite the outrage. Thankfully, Richard himself agreed to meet up with me and answer any questions I may have about his controversies and his life. So today, join me as I take a never-before-seen look at his past to see how he may have ended up the way he is today. We're going to take a deep dive inside the mind of the internet's most psychotic vegan. So, how are you feeling? Good. It's uh, 11 a.m. in the morning. We're currently on our way to Best Buy to pick up some stuff because today we are meeting with psychotic vegan YouTuber, Vegan Gains. Um, probably like the most infamous vegan on the internet. I, I can't really think of anyone who comes close. I, honestly, I can't even think of any other vegans online. He's really just him. Um, and I'm honestly kind of nervous to hang out with him today because he said he was down for a video and like that's all good Like he's down for collabs and stuff. Apparently he hasn't done very many of them um, But he says crazy stuff I asked him about meat eaters and like what he would do if it was legal to kill them and he was like Yeah, I mean if it was legal, I would probably meat eaters to be honest with you like there'd just be nothing stopping me from bashing their fucking heads in and I was like, oh Okay we're, uh, we're in that kind of territory, I guess. So I don't know. I'm a little nervous personally. Like he might, you know, cave my head in like a coconut or something. Do I know that's going to happen? No, but um, yeah, definitely a little nervous. So and as always, keep in mind, I don't necessarily endorse or support any opinions expressed by Vegan Gains. This video has been created for entertainment, education and comedy purposes only. Thank you. Much of what we know about Vegan Gaines' early life comes from his own mouth. That being said, given a lot of the information he shared doesn't exactly paint him in a positive light, I'm willing to believe his stories. Richard Burgess was born in 1991 in Canada. These formative years were marred by an atmosphere that he himself describes as somewhat hostile. The primary reason for this was his parents' relentless obsession with his involvement in hockey. His parents were extremely committed to making sure he had a strict training regimen. The weight of this expectation bore heavily on his shoulders, creating immense pressure for a young boy. The 
intensity of that obsession would lead them to shame and humiliate him, especially when he didn't perform up to their lofty standards, or if his team suffered a loss on the ice. Richard recalls the uncomfortable car rides home, marked by their angry tirades, where they would berate him with scathing criticisms, accusing him of playing poorly and insinuating that he should feel ashamed for merely attempting to try to play hockey. Richard has also said he had asthma as a child, and he attributes this to potentially being the reason why. It's rumored that the ice rinks he would constantly play on actually had ammonia spilling out of the fridges, which could have killed him. Sometimes as a child while riding his bike, Richard would start choking profusely and eventually collapse before passing out. He would wake up soon after and barely remember anything, and the doctors would subsequently diagnose him with asthma. These recollections of his family life in those early years are far from fond memories. Instead, they represent the lowest point in his childhood, a period marked by his family fighting and emotional hardship. There were small benefits, though. He recognizes that enduring such harsh criticism and relentless pressure may have inadvertently equipped him with the ability to deal with criticism in the future, and overcome any obstacle. These early lessons in resilience would prove invaluable as he started making online content, where the YouTube comment section can be just as unforgiving as the ice rink. Yeah, I got into, like, it's a pretty hostile environment growing up. I had uh, some pretty crazy hockey parents. I had to do a lot of training, had a lot of pressure on me, and if I, like, just didn't play well, I was kind of, like, shamed and humiliated by my parents. Like, in front of other kids, how would they shame you? Um, no, it was usually, like, in the car ride home just for, like, f***ing straight hour, them saying, like, I played, like, sh there's no point in them, like, supporting me playing anymore because I, I suck, like, you know, that sort of crap. Do you feel bad about that? Do you think it gave you a thick skin? Do you appreciate your upbringing, or...? No, that was definitely not a good thing. Not a good thing? Yeah. Do you think it shaped how you are now? Um, I'm sure to some degree. I think I tolerate a lot of things pretty well because of my upbringing. Like, talk online. Yeah, like, like talk online. During the formative years of his life, Richard would start attending school and immediately stood out from your typical kid. He often characterizes himself as an autistic kid, a label that, in many ways, set him apart from the rest of his peers. In the social ecosystem of his school, he was definitely an oddball. However, it's worth noting that he wasn't friendless. He was fortunate enough to have a small but loyal group of friends who stuck by his side. These friends, he would later reflect, were part of the reason he made it through high school. Yet, despite the solace he found in his close-knit circle, he couldn't escape frequent clashes with other students and teachers. These conflicts, in his own words, may have been trivial at times, but he couldn't help but wonder if they were tinged with discrimination due to his Somali heritage. One vivid memory etched into his mind was of a teacher who, in his own words, bore an uncanny resemblance to the fat lady who replaced Mr. Garrison in South Park. His words, not mine. This particular teacher appeared to single Richard out, seemingly for no discernible reason, leading him to wonder whether his ethnicity played a role in his treatment. The tribulations he faced were not limited to his interactions with teachers, though. In the theater of classroom dynamics, there existed a recurrent antagonist named David. David, though physically smaller, seemed to derive perverse pleasure from tormenting Richard. He engaged in a relentless campaign of small-scale bullying, stealing Richard's pencil case and subjecting him to incessant taunts. In this distressing situation, Richard found himself seeking recourse from authority figures in his life, his teachers and parents, but he didn't receive very much support. This betrayal of trust left Richard feeling even more isolated and the injustice weighed heavily on his shoulders. I was like the autistic kid who was weird, had few friends, but they were quality friends. I really butted heads with teachers a lot. Didn't usually have too many problems with students, but teachers got into a lot of fight with teachers. A lot of petty stuff. I think I've had some racist teachers. Really? Because they seem to have like picked on me specifically. Okay. There was one teacher in grade four. I think her name was Miss she literally looked like that uh, teacher from South Park, the fat, ugly chick that replaced <laughs> Mr. Garrison. Yeah, okay. She would um, kind of single me out in class. Like if anybody was talking, like if it would always be me that got yeah. like told to shut up. And there was this kid named David in the class, white kid. He would tease me and stuff and he, he tried to bully me, but he was like way smaller. He would just try to bully me, but because he was smaller, he had to do like stupid sh like steal stuff for me, like steal my pen case. He would lie to the teacher and say that it was like his stuff that he was stealing. And then the teacher would always side with him. Yeah, I almost killed him. The catalyst for this incident can be traced back to an ordinary school day in the fourth grade. At his school, a buddy system was in place, a practice designed to ensure the safety of students during various tasks. It was on this way that Richard was assigned an unexpected partner, none other than his tormentor, David. Their mission was to retrieve files from the principal's office. Together, they ventured out of the classroom and ascended a staircase within the school building, a towering four-story structure. As they neared a railing, tension hung heavily in the air, a palpable undercurrent of animosity that had been building for far too long. In a shocking turn of events, 
events, Richard's pent-up anger erupted. So he grabbed David and basically hung him over the railing while he pled for his life. Thankfully, Richard's better judgment prevailed and he decided not to let him go. The realization that he could face serious consequences or even imprisonment brought him back to his senses. With a sudden release, he let go of David, allowing him to escape from the brink of tragedy. Remarkably, David chose to keep this traumatic incident to himself, a silence that probably came out of fear and a deep-seated apprehension of Richard. So if someone really fucks with you, like you do get genuinely like homicidal rage potentially. Yeah, like um, I think I had a lot less control over my anger when I was a kid. So yeah, when I was like really young and I, again, your frontal lobe isn't like developed when you're that age. So I could really easily just go off on people. And this wasn't even the only incident like this. In another instance, Richard almost killed him again. The backdrop for this particular encounter was supposedly a school project about Native Americans, a topic that piqued Richard's curiosity at the age of six. His fascination with archery, an art he had recently begun to explore became a pivotal factor in this unfolding drama. When this event actually occurred, he was nine years old. In a decision that would prove to be very ill-fated, Richard decided to bring his bow and arrow to school for the Native American project. Little did he know that this prop would become a symbol of his escalating anger and frustration. It was during a moment of pure rage that he drew back an arrow, taking careful aim at David. His desire, as he admitted to me, was for David to see his death coming. This marked a second occasion during which Richard had threatened David's life. However, as before, legal consequences loomed large in his mind. The realization that he could face incarceration and the profound moral implications of taking a life led him to relent once more, sparing David from the brink of disaster. The aftermath of this incident left David undoubtedly shaken, perhaps nursing not only a profound fear of his fellow classmate, but also a metaphorical fear of, uh, shitting his pants. I did archery since I was, like, pretty young. Mm -hmm. Like, probably around, like, maybe six, seven, eight years old, something like that. And, um, there was, like, this class project thing with Nate of Americans and pilgrims and shit. And this is pre 9-11, so things were more lax, mm -hmm. you know? So um, I brought the bow and arrow as part of my like Native American character and I had actual arrows. Mm. So I just knocked an arrow. I was gonna just shoot him. Cause like, again, I don't like him. I wanted him to see his death coming. So <laughs> he, he wasn't, he wasn't paying attention. <laughs> So you didn't do it for that reason. Well, he 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 wasn't paying attention. So I said, "Hey, David." So he looked over. <laughs> he freaked out and like he he was like, "Oh my God, help!" And I just like again, just synapses in my child brain started going and I'm like, probably go to jail for this or something. Despite the unsettling events and instances of explosive anger that peppered his life, those around him apparently didn't readily brand him as a psychotic individual. Instead, Richard managed to foster positive relationships with some of his peers, even if he remained, in his own words, a bit weird. Did people in your school see you as like psychotic or dangerous or anything? Um, no, I got along with most people. However, it became evident that beneath the surface of this seemingly enigmatic, but ultimately harmless guy to most people, there was a lot of anger. During this period, Richard grappled with a hair trigger temper, easily flaring up in confrontations. Richard himself attributes this volatile disposition to the fact that his brain had not fully matured. Yet his self-analysis doesn't end there. He hints at the possibility of having autism or Asperger's, though he clarifies that he's never received an official diagnosis. Later in life, discussions with friends and even his wife hinted at suspicions that he might exhibit traits associated with these conditions. These revelations add a layer of complexity to his story, shedding light on potential underlying factors. To further complicate matters, Richard also thinks he may have ASPD, or Antisocial Personality Disorder. ASPD is most often associated with psychopathy, or sociopathy, which in turn is characterized by a lack of empathy for others. Traits that would definitely align with his behavior in childhood, and even as an adult, it makes sense. He doesn't shy away from confronting this possibility head-on. Acknowledging that he perceives himself as a possible sociopath, but obviously this is not an official medical diagnosis This is just what he believes the way I think like as long as people don't get in my way I don't care like I'd rather just generally not be around too many people or Associate with them or get to know them There's some people that I think are cool that I you know become friends with but if they kind of get in my way and start with me, I have no problem f***ing with them. By high school, he had already started weightlifting, resulting in a remarkable increase in muscle mass and physical stature. But this weightlifting did little to blow off steam. During this time, Richard forged a friendship with an individual he likens to the Eric Cartman of their group, a comparison
description that effectively described his friend as pretty much being an asshole. And I guess it's also worth noting, I think he probably likes South Park. At one point, this friend borrowed video games from Richard only to never return them. A breach of trust that left him disillusioned and feeling betrayed. Even more, this friend displayed a callousness that extended to the mistreatment of dogs, kicking them off it. In a perplexing turn of events, Richard found himself engaged in a brutal physical confrontation with this friend. The story goes he was walking past his friend's house one day, and he spotted his friend outside, or now former friend, enjoying a cigarette near the high school. So Richard then approached him and unleashed a vicious beating. His explanation for this act of aggression was devoid of a specific provocation. It seemed to be a culmination of past incidents and the need to assert dominance over someone who had repeatedly pushed his limits. You mentioned there was one time when you, you like brutally beat some kid. Yeah. When you were, you were still in high school still? Yeah, this was high school. I think I would have been about 16, 17. Okay. And you were into lifting by that time? Yeah. Were you pretty jacked or were you trying to go more lean? For my age, I would have been pretty jacked. Okay. Yeah. And um, this kid, what, what was your beef with him? Was he your former friend or something? Yeah, he was kind of like the Cartman of a friend group I had. And uh, I lent him video games that he stole and I saw him kick his dog. And then, yeah, I just beat the crap out of him. Jesus. And uh, you just like confronted him outside of his house. He was just there. He was just there smoking cigarettes and I happened to be there. So I just beat his ass. Damn. That's crazy. Like, it wasn't like a premeditated thing you were thinking all day. You just happened no. to be driving by. Yeah, I just happened to be walking by some, yeah. Beat his ass and just walked away? That yeah. That was it? And you yeah. felt no, like, no remorse or anything for that? No. Um think he got what he deserved. Rich didn't try very much in high school and didn't do very well when it came to grades, but that didn't stop him from making a significant change right before his 19th birthday that would go on to pretty much define his life from there on out, going vegan. This decision to fully go vegan, he claims, was because of two main events. One of them was a near-death experience, which came from an E. coli infection that put him in the hospital due to an infection in his knee. Richard was in extreme amounts of pain from this, so the doctors gave him a large dose of morphine along with a mix of oxycodone and Percocets. Rich thinks that he took so many of these painkillers that it almost killed him. So much so that he could hear his heart stop, at which point he claims to have had an out-of-body experience where he realized the preciousness and value of life, therefore becoming extremely sensitive to animals. Despite this, one of the most interesting things about vegan gains is while he has a relatively high amount of empathy for animals, he has a very low amount of empathy for humans, especially those who are hypocrites. The second incident that influenced his decision to go vegan was when his friend showed him a speech called The Most Important Speech You Will Ever Hear by Gary Yurofsky, an animal rights activist. In this speech, Gary discusses the cruelty and suffering that animals endure in the meat, dairy, and egg industries, highlighting the horrors of factory farming and animal exploitation. He argues that it is morally wrong to harm animals for human consumption when there are viable alternatives available. Gary also addresses the environmental impact of animal agriculture, emphasizing the role it plays in deforestation, greenhouse gas emissions, and resource depletion. He asserts that adopting a vegan diet can significantly reduce our ecological footprint. Furthermore, Yurovsky claims that there are many health benefits that come from a vegan lifestyle, so studies that link animal products to various health issues. He promotes a plant-based diet as a way to improve personal well-being and the well-being of animals. Throughout his speech, he uses graphic imagery to engage the audience and drive home his points. The golden rule states, do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. Animals qualify as others, and thou shalt not kill. The four most important yet most ignored words in all religious teachings. After seeing his speech, right on the spot, Rich was convinced enough to go fully vegan, and ever since then, he's not had any meat since the age of 18. You ate meat until you were like 20? Well, no. I, again, I turned vegan just before my 19th birthday. Okay. So, so you were 18. Yeah. So I think there were two things that really led to it. One was a near death experience that I had uh, when I had an E. coli infection in the hospital. I think I overdosed on opiates. So I had multiple surgeries to try to flesh out the infection in my knee. So I was put under. I was on the highest dose of morphine they could give me and the nurses gave me Oxycontin and Percocets. And this is all in one day. Oh, so, so you must have been in, like in extreme so, pain. So yeah, I was in insane pain. And and I think I took so many opiates, I had a near death experience. And I remember actually feeling my heart slow down and then leaving my body. And then I like became the universe. It was like this really weird out of body experience. 
I think that made me just a little more empathic because I felt like I just became everything. With this new perspective on life, Richard found himself drawn into the world of YouTube. He noticed a significant gap in the platform's content offerings, particularly in the realm of vegan health and fitness. According to him, there was an overwhelming lack of vegans in the weightlifting community, and among those that were weightlifting, Richard didn't really like them. So on December 12th, 2014, he created his own YouTube channel titled Vegan Gains. I was vegan for a few years before my YouTube channel. Yeah. I was really into like health and fitness. There wasn't really many vegan health and fitness channels. So I would just get content from like normal fitness channels and just every so often they'd make stupid videos about how like red meat is fine, like saturated fat isn't something that's too big of a deal. And they'd like promote animal products as if there's like no ethical issue. So yeah. I just got kind of fed up that there was no one fighting back against it. So decided to start my own channel. As Rich started uploading YouTube videos, his abrasive personality immediately got people attention. He was basically willing to talk anyone, regardless of sub count, experience, level, or expertise. Yeah, you have heart disease, and you had surgery for heart disease, and you're dumb enough to keep eating foods that cause heart disease. This may surprise the sh out of you, but plants have protein too, and unlike your protein supplements, plants don't lie about their protein content, so say whatever the f you want about vegetarians and vegans, let's see how hard you can punch when you die of a fucking heart attack. And as did everyone in 2014, he made sure to include some Smosh style skits. Just hold the line, we can do this! Uh, what button is for shoot again? Ooh. One series in particular proved to be the catalyst for channel growth and solidified his presence on YouTube, Worst of the Fitness Industry. This series was a scathing critique of fellow fitness YouTubers, whom Rich perceived as not only promoting an ethically questionable diet, but also embodying what he considered to be more unsavory aspects of the fitness genre as a whole. Not long after launching Worst of the Fitness Industry, his channel experienced a meteoric rise, accumulating 55,000 subscribers within a mere six months. Viewers were drawn to his unapologetic apologetic approach in dismantling larger fitness channels. His skits served as the icing on the cake, adding an element of comedy and entertainment that most others just weren't doing. Figures like Ben Pakulski, Furious Pete, and most notably Lex Fitness found themselves under a scrutiny. However, it was the latter, Lex, who managed to irk Rich to a considerable degree. Rich's video targeting Lex Fitness wasn't just a critique of his dietary choices, it was a scathing indictment of what Rich perceived as a profit-driven approach. He openly accused Lex of peddling subpar fitness supplements to his dedicated fan base solely for financial gain, rather than a genuine commitment to their well-being. Rich didn't stop at critiquing Lex's professional decisions, he also took jabs at Lex's girlfriend, insinuating that Lex was depriving her for the sake of maintaining an image online. It's not like having a functioning penis will help you win any bodybuilding shows or become a fitness model, and when your girlfriend looks like this, erections become pretty overrated anyway. Lex Fitness responded to Rich's video with a challenge of his own, urging Rich to meet him in person if he believed his words held weight. And, true to his form, Richard accepted the challenge. In June of 2015, Rich attended the 2015 Toronto Pro Super Show, an annual bodybuilding event. His primary intent was clear, to confront individuals he had critiqued online, and Lex was high on his list. The video capturing their face-to-face -face encounter at the event is a snapshot of this unfolding drama. Lex promptly demands an apology from Rich for the comments made about his girlfriend, while Vegan Gaines says no, and then turns around and flexes his bicep to the camera. The exchange escalated when Lex threatened to involve security, prompting Rich to Scooby-Doo run out of there. Lex proceeded to upload a video where he vehemently expressed his disdain for Vegan Gaines before challenging him to a physical confrontation, showcasing clips from his MMA career as evidence of his preparedness. According to Lex, Rich did eventually extend an apology to Lex's girlfriend, Lainey, but notably omitted one directed towards Lex himself. The full extent of that conversation remains unknown, but it's assumed this controversy is resolved because it's basically forgotten by now. Another thing to note about his content around this time was that Vegan Gains was trying to be as edgy as possible. I mean, it was YouTube 10 years ago, who wasn't? The start of his videos usually had an audio clip of a distorted voice saying, pray to Satan, while text flashed on screen saying the same thing. Pray to Satan, pray to Satan, pray to Satan. So bodybuilding has a really big niche fan base, sort of like Miss America. He appeared to be basically doing anything to piss people off. But it wasn't all edge. There was a genuine point to Rich's sword. In his own words, the reason why he was exposing so many fitness industry YouTubers, I just want people to realize that just because these people look good and they seem nice, they're not really trying to help you out. They want to sell supplements. They want to sell their lifestyle. They want to get money from sponsors. All of this is just completely unrealistic. I think people should just focus on health, and if you want to be athletic and go after some real athletic goals, then you shouldn't really be focused 
focusing on these bodybuilders because they're not really athletic. They're really out of shape, really. If you take a look, especially leading up to the show, a lot of people say that it's about jealousy or it's about hating on people, and it's not jealousy. I'm not jealous, or I don't really even necessarily hate any of these people. Some of them, I think they really do believe what they're saying, and people just need some perspective. Just look at the videos objectively. I want people to open their eyes and just see the other side of things and see what's really going on behind the scenes. By this point, Vegan Gains had undeniably carved out a reputation for himself in the YouTube landscape. He'd become notorious for taking every opportunity, or perhaps even inventing opportunities, to bring veganism into the limelight. His unorthodox and extreme methods of confronting and calling out people on various topics, especially when they related to veganism, were nothing short of attention-grabbing. People may have had mixed feelings about him, but there was no denying that he was an eccentric individual who, for better or worse, had a very felt presence in the fitness community. But Gaines' appeal was relatively niche. He wasn't known outside of bodybuilders. This would all change when an up-and-coming channel called Grade A Under A cast his eye upon vegan gains. On the 28th of June, 2015, he uploaded a video titled, Proof That Vegan Gains Is A Liar. The majority of this video was dedicated to Grade dissecting and exposing the contradictions within Richard's statements about why he adopted a vegan lifestyle. The implication was clear. Richard might have been bending the truth or even fabricating stories to garner sympathy, respect, and of course, more views. A central point of contention in Grade's video was Richard's habit of publicly calling out fellow bodybuilders for their alleged use of steroids. What Grade found odd is that some of the individuals whom Richard had personally endorsed in the past had their own history with steroids, thereby pointing out a glaring inconsistency. Interestingly, at the end of the video, Grade issued a challenge. He essentially dared Richard to respond, stating that if Richard chose not to react, he would release two groundbreaking videos. Clearly, this was a tactic aimed at prodding vegan gains into a response, potentially sparking a heated feud and generating even more buzz. Now, hopefully, I don't have to make any more videos about you. I've already made two other videos that are ready to be uploaded in like a second's notice, right? One of the videos that I have is one of his worst of the YouTube fitness industry videos that I stole when I hacked into Vegan Gain's computer. Because I'm a hacker, me, right? And it's one he didn't upload for very good reason. It's not one he would want you seeing, trust me. And as if that wasn't saucy enough, the other video that I've got is a personal video message to Vegan Gains from a very f***ing surprising source. What was surprising was that Richard chose to remain silent in the face of provocation. At that point, it was widely acknowledged that he had a knack for engaging in verbal battles and creating controversy, yet he inexplicably turned his back on this opportunity to fire back at Grade. As Grade promised, just five days later, he uploaded another video urging people who disliked Vegan Gains to tweet at him if they wanted to see the new video on Saturday. Two days passed, and the video was released, titled, Vegan Gains vs. Great A Under A. However, what unfolded in that video was far from what viewers might have expected. Instead of being a harsh takedown or scathing expose, it turned out to be more of a joke or a roast, straying far from the notion of a hit piece. In fact, the first three minutes of the video consisted of edited clips designed to make Richard appear stupid, and Great himself acknowledged this approach within the video. I carried on snooping, and I found some more dirt on him. And this dirt, if I'm honest, is actual dirt. Like the video you just seen, that's a joke, right? But this is actual dirt on him, right? There the remainder of the content didn't live up to the anticipation of real dirt that was promised. Instead, it mainly featured embarrassing comments that Richard had made on YouTube in the past, far from the explosive revelations that had been hinted at. After both videos had been released, both Vegan Gains and Grade A Under A experienced a noticeable surge in growth. This boost in popularity occurred despite the fact that Richard chose to remain completely silent. That being said, once the videos were all out on the table, Richard released a response where he criticized Grade for avoiding the topic of veganism altogether and called his voice annoying. Wow, three videos videos about one person and they're nothing but 10 minutes of personal ad hominem attacks. Nothing about veganism, nutrition, the environment, or anything relevant to the topics of my videos. Just you obsessing over me. Why don't you just come out and say what you really feel? By August, Richard had amassed over 80,000 subscribers and he was about to pull one of his wildest stunts yet. In late July, Richard made an announcement on his Facebook, sharing the distressing news that his grandfather had suffered a heart attack and was being rushed to the hospital. Accompanied by a stark declaration that he might not survive. However, many found the last sentence to be pretty offensive. My grandfather just had a heart attack, seizure, or stroke. I'm not sure exactly what yet. His heart stopped beating and he stopped breathing, but the paramedics were able to get his heart going again, but he still can't breathe on his own. He's on his way to the hospital right now and I'm not sure what's going to happen to him. He's 82 and there's a very likely chance he's going to die. This is the price you pay for a bad diet and you can expect to see a video on this very soon. I'm going to warn you all ahead of time, it will be graphic. A few days later, Rich uploaded a video titled, My Grandfather's heart attack and death. The videos, despite
description mirrored that closing sentence from his earlier Facebook post. Within this video, he provided his own personal account of his grandfather's demise, confirming that he had indeed succumbed to a heart attack. Yet, what astounded viewers was something that Rich admitted within this video, that he wanted to record his own grandfather's death and share it with the world via YouTube. I called 911. They told me to perform CPR on him until the uh, paramedics got there. So I was performing CPR on him for a few minutes uh, until the paramedics got there. Then I took out my camera, started filming, and of course you can't see the footage, but uh, that's what happened. His family obviously reacted with horror and staunch disapproval, promptly forbidding him from carrying out such a disturbing plan. Rich's evident sadness in not being able to execute this intention only added to the unsettling nature of the situation. His rationale for wanting to publicly document his grandfather's death was as insane as it was unsettling. He articulated a belief that his grandfather's dietary choices had contributed to his fatal heart attack. In Rich's view, sharing this grim spectacle to go on the internet would serve as a cautionary tale, a stark example of the dire consequences of an improper diet. Naturally, that video attracted an enormous wave of criticism from virtually everyone who came across it. People from all corners of the internet began labeling Richard a psychopath for wanting to film that and post it to his YouTube channel. However, in response to this barrage of criticism, Richard displayed a remarkable degree of unwavering conviction. He doubled and then tripled down, seemingly not caring that people were upset at him at all. A YouTuber named Repsion stepped into the controversy and issued a video strongly condemning Richard's actions. In that video, Repsion suggested that Richard might have a mental disability, claiming that only someone lacking in empathy or humanity could do such a thing. Repsion's video, which criticized Richard in no uncertain terms, added a lot of fuel to the already raging fire. Who in their right mind, unless they're mentally ill and sick, like beyond the normal scope of a mentally ill person, I'm mentally ill myself, I have clinical depression, why is the first thought to come to your mind is, hey, I want to record my grandfather having a stroke? How does someone think like this? Hey, the first thought that's gonna go through my mind when my dad's having a heart attack is I'm going to record him having that heart attack so I can show it to YouTube, to show it to all my YouTube subscribers and this is what eating meat really does. But this actually wasn't the first time that Richard and Repsion had crossed paths. The seeds of this online encounter were sown back in May when Repsion took to YouTube to articulate a stance on veganism. His viewpoint at its core didn't fundamentally oppose the principles of veganism itself. Instead, his reservations were rooted in the instances where individuals seemed inclined to impose their dietary choices onto others instead of allowing people to live their own lives how they want to. By now, it should be no surprise that vegan gains had a penchant for taking matters to the extreme. In characteristic fashion, he felt compelled to respond to Repsion's commentary by making it abundantly clear that he couldn't endorse a hands-off approach to non-veganism because to him, the act of not actively advocating for veganism was in essence an act of complicity in the torture and murder of animals. He expressed that remaining silent on the matter was tantamount to endorsing cruelty and that anyone who is willing to eat meat or not call out others who do eat meat is complicit in the suffering of millions and millions of animals every year. So I'm going to get straight to the point. Mr. Repsion. Yes, Mr. Repsion thinks that unless it's affecting you directly, you have no right to protest. So let's just let people torture, murder, do whatever sick fucking horrible acts they want to animals because unless it's affecting you directly, it doesn't matter because we're all just selfish little children who feel no responsibility to help others. Repsion, in turn, issued a follow-up video reiterating his initial points. He contended that Richard had misconstrued and taken his comments out of context, thus setting the stage for a rebuttal. The drama that ensued followed a pretty predictable trajectory, gradually fizzling out and fading into the background, until Richard's grandfather passed and he wanted to film it and post it to YouTube, at which point Repsion got involved again. Of course, Vegan Gaines saw Repsion's video about his grandfather, and in typical fashion, he responded by launching into a heated rant while playing Call of Duty during a live stream. He did not hold back, calling Repsion a little bitch and even making death threats, which, I mean, while he is kind of joking about it, I think he does feel that way a little bit. Repsion's a little fucking bitch. Like, I usually don't have a huge issue with people I make videos about, but, uh, yeah, if I had the opportunity, I'd He even goes as far as to display a knife on camera as part of his rant. Witnessing this, Repsion felt compelled to create another response. He expressed his concern that Rich had gone way overboard by making explicit threats, and that he was documenting this for the future in case something happened. Repsion held his firm belief that Rich exhibited psychopathic tendencies, reiterating his initial assessment of the situation. But, as Vegan Gaines looks back on this situation, he acknowledges that he would have 
handled it much differently. His initial impulse to record his grandfather's passing for public consumption stemmed more from emotional trauma that had occurred to him as a result of his grandfather, which also extended to the rest of his family. The reasons he had given previously, such as wanting to showcase his grandfather's dietary choices and how that led to his death to his audience, served more as excuses for his actions rather than representing the actual motivation behind them. I didn't post it to YouTube. Okay. My family stopped me from doing that. But you would you would have, I guess. Yeah, I would have. So the real reason, I just had, I've had years to think about it. I've had a lot of issues with my grandfather. He was pretty abusive to me. A little bit physically, like he's hit me a few times, but a lot like mentally and emotionally. Okay. Um, and he was a scary guy. Even like my mom and uh, my uncles, so his kids, they would talk about having like nightmares about him throwing like explosive glass at them and shit. So like he was kind of a scary, intense dude. It's a bit of a love-hate relationship though. He's kind of like the nicest asshole you could ever meet. I think he was mistreated a lot as a kid and he would do things to kind of like make up for that. Like make sure you get every Christmas present you want. That being said, this wouldn't even be close to the last time that Richard managed to piss off the audience and attract the ire of commentary channels who sought to profit fit off of criticizing him. Furious Pete, another bodybuilding YouTuber from Canada, was on a steady climb in terms of subscribers during the same time period as Richard. Like Rich, he had an interesting story that set him apart. At the age of 17, Pete battled and overcame an ED, which was a significant turning point in his life. He then shifted his focus to fitness and even started competitive eating as a sort of personal rehabilitation, which is an interesting story to say the least. Over the past decade, Pete has managed to garner an impressive following of over 2.5 million subscribers, and his channel features some truly mind-boggling content, including videos where he devours insane quantities of food in record time, from eating two pounds of butter a day to taking on the challenge of consuming 150 warheads in one go. Pete uses YouTube platform not only for showcasing his eating feats, but also for documenting his workouts and trying to incorporate workout content along with his eating challenges. One of the most memorable moments that added to his fame was when he consumed over seven pounds of pulled pork in just six minutes. In October 2014, he broke from his usual content style to upload a video on his channel, and this time, the tone was pretty sad. Within the upload, he told told his fans that at age 30, he had received a diagnosis of testicular cancer and had to undergo surgery to remove one of his testicles. Despite the gravity of the situation, Pete reassured his friends and fans that he intended to continue living life much as he always had. However, some viewers believed that he needed to make substantial changes to his lifestyle, particularly when it came to his diet. The prevailing sentiment among some was that he needed to significantly reduce his meat consumption to improve his chances of defeating cancer. He was literally eating pounds of meat a day, so it's not unfair to make an assessment like that. That. These discussions around Pete's diet were not new. They had existed as a part of an ongoing dialogue among his viewers. Some vegans asserted that his non-vegan diet was a contributing factor to his illness, a claim that Pete vehemently challenged. He defended his position, asserting, I've gotten a lot of hate from vegans stating I got cancer because I'm not vegan. I will simply state that anyone can get cancer. And he urged those commenting to just let go of the topic. In one of his videos, Pete revealed that he had received numerous messages, including lengthy emails, DMs, and even handwritten letters from strangers. These comments, especially the those regarding his diet infuriated him, a sentiment he openly expressed in this video. It was hardly a surprise when Rich decided to feature Furious Pete in one of his scathing, worst of the fitness industry videos, published on April 5th, 2015. The video's description alone hinted at the crux of Richard's criticism. What makes Furious Pete the worst of the fitness industry? Well, for one thing, he eats a lot of fucking meat. Richard dissected Pete's diet, which included excessive consumption of olive oil and butter, while Pete unabashedly claimed to have a healthy diet. Beyond dietary differences, Richard took offense at the seemingly innocuous choice of clothing by Pete, a shirt depicting a cow with a fork stuck in it. For someone like Richard, who passionately advocated for veganism and animal rights, this symbol made him furious. One of Richard's most controversial accusations echoed what some commenters had already suggested, that Pete's dietary habits, marked by excess and indulgence, might have contributed to his diagnosis of testicular cancer. However, it's worth noting that after the video's release, it didn't stir up as much controversy as one might expect. Pete chose not to respond to Richard's initial video, and the matter appeared to rest there. Interestingly, they ran into each other just a few months later, this time physically in real life. Both Richard and Pete were slated to attend the same fitness expo in Toronto, and followers of both YouTube stars anticipated a possible real-life showdown. And yes, this was the same expo where Richard had previously confronted Lex. In the aftermath of the event, both Richard and Pete uploaded videos detailing their respective experiences, providing their followers with a glimpse into the encounter. However, it was Richard who dropped hints of potential trouble, insinuating that he'd come face-to-face -face with Pete when the cameras weren't rolling. Vegan Gaines described Furious Pete as as visibly agitated during their interaction, and even claimed that Pete's girlfriend had called security on him. 
right, so if you're at the Toronto Fitness Expo, I uh, tried to talk to Furious Pete, but uh, he was kind of pissed off, didn't really want to see me. Hey, Pete! 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 Hey, Pete! Yeah, he won't say hi. However, Pete's account of the situation differed quite a bit. According to Pete, Richard had approached his booth where a line of fans eagerly awaited their turn to meet him. Rather than waiting his turn like everyone else, Richard decided to confront Pete directly in front of his fans. Pete said that he had simply asked Richard to leave. He clarified that if Richard genuinely wanted to engage in a conversation, he should have followed the same protocol as everyone else and waited in line. Despite the tantalizing prospect of an on-camera confrontation, the alleged face-off between Richard and Pete at the fitness expo never really happened, leaving the drama somewhat inconclusive until a few few months later. Pete had recently gone into remission, which means that the cancer looked like it was going away, which is obviously great news to his followers and him. Richard, however, kept on the warpath. As the Vegan Gains channel continued to grow, he once again took aim at Furious Pete, this time with a scathing video denouncing Pete's new weight loss supplements as nothing more than a scam. Surprisingly, even in the face of these accusations, Furious Pete chose not to react, maintaining a stoic silence. However, events would soon take another grim turn for Pete. Later in that very month, news broke that Pete's cancer had made a return. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, reports emerged that Pete had initiated a series of private copyright infringement claims against Richard for using his footage without permission. In one of his video uploads, Pete candidly disclosed his choice to undergo radiation treatment to combat the resurgent cancer. While the majority of comments on this video offered heartfelt support, one particular comment stood out for his lack of sympathy. It was a comment left by Vegan Gaines, where he said, by the way, you're not going to be able to make fallacious copyright claims on my videos when you're dead. Perhaps as a response to Richard's callous comment, visitors who clicked through to Vegan Gaines' account discovered a new video titled, Furious Pete Has Cancer Again. Oh no. In this video, Richard did not hold back at all. He seized the opportunity to reiterate his unyielding stance on animal products and their association with cancer. In characteristically blunt fashion, he didn't mince words when referring to Pete. So there you go, animal products greatly increase your cancer risk and Furious Pete is a dumb selfish who continued to eat meat, dairy, and eggs even after he learned about all of this. And now it looks like he's gonna die of cancer and if you ask me, he's getting exactly what he deserved and good thing for me and a few other people is you can't make fallacious copyright claims when you're dead. Predictably, the comments section of Richard's video quickly descended into pure rage. Supporters of Pete unleashed a barrage of vitriolic insults, accompanied by spiteful comments detailing their intentions to consume extra meat in his honor. Some even expressed a desire to see someone physically confront Richard in response to his harsh words. Notably, even self-identified vegans who had initially aligned themselves with Richard's viewpoints voiced their disapproval, believing that he had crossed the line. However, Pete continued his deliberate avoidance of directly addressing Richard on his YouTube channel. Instead, Pete's vlog updates began featuring glimpses of his daily progress during the arduous 20 days of radiation treatment. His followers, however, continued to beseech him to finally confront Richard and to stop avoiding the subject. When Pete engaged in an AMA session on the r slash fitness subreddit, he pretty much sidestepped any question pertaining to Richard, despite the evident curiosity of those eager to glean some insight into their ongoing feud. In response to inquiries about this long-standing conflict, he chose a rather diplomatic stance saying, Personally, I like some of his videos, they're funny, I just wasn't a fan of someone being overly excited that I got cancer. By November 2015, Pete received the news that he was officially declared cancer-free. Subsequently, the animosity surrounding the feud, largely created by Richard, seemed to subside. However, Pete's period of silence proved to be a transient one. In a January 4th upload titled, The Problem with Vegan Gains, The Cult, Pete decided to break his silence on the topic of the vegan movement. In this video, he expressed his views, stating, Vegans are so damn aggressive in trying to influence others that are not vegans to become vegans. They're so damn aggressive, and if you say no to them, they wish death upon you. They wish that you know you didn't exist and wish you nothing but the worst. I hate to make this comparison, but it's in the news all the time, and veganism is almost like ISIS lately. Pete's analogy immediately provoked an angry reaction. In response to the backlash, Pete promptly replaced the video with an edited version that omitted the reference to ISIS. Nevertheless, he defended his initial comparison in the comment section, explaining, Let's set something straight, especially the ISIS comment I made. When some vegans make videos wishing death upon you and wanting you to be killed if you don't do what they preach, I believe it is a very fair comparison. With Pete finally having broken his silence and igniting a fresh wave of controversy, Richard wasted no time in issuing a scathing response. On January 5th, he uploaded a video wherein he accused Pete's followers of systematically hitting the dislike button on his videos en masse, and that because of that, Pete deserved to suffer from a terminal illness, which would lead to his 
demise. I don't know what I can say on YouTube for this, but <laughs> you can probably imagine what Vegan Gain said. Since your followers have a tendency to dislike my videos before they even watch them, I think it's only fair that you die. Once again, we don't endorse any opinions expressed by Vegan Gains. Uh, this is this is what he said in his video. In fact, I, I vehemently disagree with that opinion, of course. Within a matter of days, Richard's response video amassed a staggering 21,000 dislikes compared to 15,000 likes. The comment section became a battleground for supporters of both parties, with impassioned individuals voicing their thoughts. Some commenters expressed their desire to see Richard confront his critics in person, with one individual writing, Man, I just want Vegan Gains to talk crap to all these people face to face and get his ass kicked. In response, Richard confidently retorted, I have and nothing happened, before sharing a link to his video documenting the Toronto Fitness Expo, where the alleged confrontation with Pete took place. Surprisingly, a few people emerged from the woodwork to defend him, though. One woman wrote, I don't even like vegan gains, but everything he says in this video is completely valid. He draws comparisons that are 100% true and relevant. Various Pete needs to pull his head out of his ass. But predictably, neither side showed any inclination to concede to the other, and ultimately, the drama died down. In 2016, the Vegan Gains channel experienced continuous growth, and this year could probably be considered the pinnacle of his internet fame, or perhaps more fittingly, his internet infamy. If you scoured Reddit around that time, you'd come across some individuals, often referred to as fedora tippers, likening him to the Donald Trump of vegans, a truly insightful comparison that added a touch of intellect to his online persona. Throughout 2016, Richard began adopting an even edgier approach in content creation, aligning with the prevailing trend of commentary videos and scathing critiques of fellow creators. This period witnessed the creation of some of his most infamous videos, such as How I Humanely People. In this video, Richard sat in a dimly lit room, casting a shadowy silhouette across his face as he delved into explicit details about his method of meticulously targeting individuals with seemingly great lives and consuming them for his own pleasure. And if it's not clear, that video is satirical. He's not being serious, I think. Another highly talked about video from this era was If Elliot Roger Was Vegan. And not to be forgotten is his classic invite to the Toronto Veg Fest, a vegan festival where he hoped to connect with his fans in real life. It's a great opportunity to meet me and don't be shy, I say hi and talk to everyone. Hey, vegan games, vegan games! Told ya! God! Several other edgy videos would keep skyrocketing him in popularity until finally the final boss of 2016 would cover him. Leafy is here. Leafy was at the time experiencing his own zenith of internet fame, and he had a penchant for creating content centered around individuals who were unconventional, offbeat, or peculiar. In this context, vegan gains fit the bill perfectly. Leafy's video about vegan gains, much like his usual content, wasn't known for its in-depth or artistic merit. Instead, it boiled down to the time-tested formula of poking fun at the weirdest and most infamous moments of vegan gains his YouTube career. Leafy dove into the controversies that had embroiled vegan gains, including stuff with Repsion and Furious Pete. At the outset of the video, Leafy featured what might just be one of the most widely circulated clips of vegan gains. In this infamous snippet, vegan gains expresses his vehement aversion to babies, albeit in a very unique way. What? <laughs> Holy shit. This man is seriously mentally f this dude needs to straight up be locked up, and I'm not talking about jail, I'm not talking about prison. I feel like the US government needs to drop some budget and redo Alcatraz, and then put this man in a helicopter, fly over to Alcatraz. Once the helicopter and this man child are about 100 feet above Alcatraz, toss him out of the f helicopter like a horseshoe. And also with no parachute, trust me, he'll be fine. The shock value was undeniable. However, it's worth noting that Vegan Gains later revealed that his revulsion towards babies wasn't just a persona he put on for the internet. He claims to have harbored a deep-seated and irrational fear of babies since childhood. He finds their appearance unsettling and even underwent a vasectomy, a drastic step that he attributed to his discomfort around babies. This vasectomy was the original inspiration behind the controversial video, which features his tirade about infants. They're not cute. Uh, they they have like these weird bald heads, bulging eyes, creepy little toes and fingers. Yeah, they just creep me out and they make really annoying sounds. So you would never want to have kids? Nope. Um, I have a vasectomy and my wife has a hysterectomy, so it would be literally impossible for us to have kids. Do you think if you had a kid you would come to love it? No. No. Uh, I don't think I have any <laughs> paternal instincts. That's crazy. I thought everyone kind of had that. That's, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I... Has have, it always been the case, like, since you were young? Yeah, even when I was 
like like when I was old enough to be lucid, so probably like around three, four, when you know your memories start to form. Yeah. Um, really creeped out by babies. While many of the clips, including the baby segment, were clearly exaggerated for comedic effects, Leafy didn't seem to interpret them as such, despite likely understanding the satirical nature of Vegan Gains' content. This discrepancy in perception prompted Vegan Gains to respond. In his rebuttal, Vegan Gains accused Leafy of being a bully who targeted mentally disabled individuals. He argued that Leafy took his blatantly exaggerated jokes as serious statements, equating it to slander and libel. Vegan Gains didn't mince words in defending his content and his intent. Interestingly, despite any negative sentiments Vegan Gains may have held towards Leafy, the fallout from this exchange was undeniable. The video Leafy created catapulted Vegan Gains to even greater heights of online recognition. In the wake of Leafy's video, Vegan Gains saw a surge in subscribers, with his sub count soaring beyond the 200,000 mark. The views on his channel were also skyrocketing, regularly raking in millions of views each month. The year 2016 wasn't just a pivotal moment in Richard's online career, it also marked significant personal milestones and improvements in his life. On November 1st, he shared a video with his audience, revealing that he was about to get married with his longtime girlfriend, Jasmine. For those who followed Richard's vlogs, Jasmine wasn't an unfamiliar face. She had made appearances in his real-life segments even before this announcement, blending into the fabric of his channel. Familiarity had already bred comfort for fans, as they often spotted her popping in and out of the vlogs. Before Jasmine came into his life, during his teenage years, Richard harbored vivid fantasies about engaging in casual relationships with many women, believing it to be the epitome of coolness. However, he claims that as he matured and had the opportunity to explore those desires, he found that such a lifestyle didn't really resonate with him. His growing popularity on YouTube exposed him to various vegan gats who sent him direct messages seemingly interested in one-night stands, something he didn't want to pursue. It was during this time that Jasmine entered the picture. She reached out to Richard on Facebook, expressing her admiration for his videos. Richard sensed that she was seeking something more substantial than a mere one-night stand. They initially bonded over their shared interest in playing Call of Duty, and from there, their relationship grew, with them being together to this day. Before I became sexually active, um, so when I was in my early teens, I always fantasized about like fucking tons of different women. Thought it was hot to like have sex with people you don't really know that you just met. Then when I did it, it sucked out. Um, so you were intimate with a few people and then you were like, yeah. this is not for me. Yeah, it's not for me. Then I only really looked for good long-term relationships. And then I met Jasmine online and we just really clicked. And then things just grew and, you know, we was eventually a, got married. Was it like a dating app? How'd you meet? No, Facebook. She messaged me on Facebook and we ended up playing Call of Duty together. Um, I had a lot of girls messaging me saying that they want to like meet up to have sex or like they would make it. I could see, like, read between the lines that they were more interested in sex than, like, actually a long-term relationship. You didn't really care for that? No. And Jasmine, when she messaged me, it seemed like she actually was interested in a long-term relationship, so yeah, I just uh, messaged her back. And they do seem to be quite compatible. Notably, even Jasmine has undergone a hysterectomy alongside Richard's vasectomy, so there's no chance of having a vegan gains junior for anyone worried about that. As 2016 drew to a close, Richard was undoubtedly on cloud nine. He did she new heights in his career, along with in his personal life. Everything appeared to be at its peak, a high point that many believed couldn't be surpassed. But it wouldn't be the end of his conflicts with other creators. As 2017 and 18 rolled by, it became increasingly evident that Richard's YouTube channel was experiencing a noticeable decline in views. The very edgy style of content that had once garnered him a substantial following was losing its popularity, and in the eyes of the YouTube algorithm, making jokes at the expense of people's appearance and other sensitive subjects was no longer favorable. Adding to the challenges Richard faced during this period, he found himself in a series of run-ins with the police. According to Rich, the local police force in the Toronto area had developed a level of familiarity with his persona, to the extent that officers would approach him with phrases like, oh hey, you're Vegan Gains, our whole station knows you. This apparent recognition raised questions about whether or not he was under some form of surveillance, or if he was a point of interest for an investigation. The initial episode unfolded when Richard made the usual statements, such as, all meat eaters should die, or be nice to animals, or I'll kill you. Subsequently, he found himself under arrest and placed within the confines of a mental evaluation clinic. The second incident, by contrast, unfolded under rather unusual circumstances. Richard inadvertently purchased a pair of leather gloves from a store. However, he used this as an opportunity to create content for his YouTube channel. In a video titled, I Bought Leather Gloves, Hashtag Not Vegan Anymore, he held a BB gun while crafting a thumbnail that depicted him pointing the BB gun in his own mouth. The intention behind this thumbnail was unmistakably tongue-in-cheek, an overt attempt to generate interest from viewers. In this particular case, Richard contends that a law enforcement officer went to lengths to deceive a judge. Allegedly, the officer was aware that the BB gun in question was, in fact, a non-lethal fake firearm. Nevertheless, the officer purported it to be real, perhaps in an effort to secure 
a warrant for Richard's arrest. Notably, despite these claims, the officer faced no consequences due to the lack of concrete evidence. The cop actually admitted that he lied to a judge and he knew I had a BB gun and I made a joke with a BB gun because I accidentally bought a pair of leather gloves. So I got the BB gun, said I bought a pair of leather gloves, bang, that was the joke. So he lied to a judge, claimed I had a real gun, got a warrant and then arrested me, fucked with me and I just had this whole legal rigor, rigmarole for like two years. Did you get fired? No. Um, couldn't prove it. None of it was recorded, so. Once again, keep in mind, this story is just from Vegan Gain's perspective. The reality could be entirely different. This setback, however, didn't deter Richard in the slightest. Notable figures he found himself in debates with included creators like Matt Dillahunty, Andy Worski, and Vosh. And so, life on YouTube carried on, with his debates and edgy content sparking both intrigue and controversy. It seemed like he was navigating this much as he always had, but then in January of 2019, his YouTube channel was hit with not one, not two, but three strikes, leading to its complete termination from the platform. One of these strikes, Richard explained, stemmed from a video in which he poked fun at another creator, targeting their hairy chest and even talking about possible interest in female domination. These comments were clearly in jest, intended solely for comedic effects, but YouTube's automated systems failed to see the humor, resulting in a strike. The other strikes were even more concerning. Richard found himself accused of promoting animal cruelty, an accusation that was pretty obviously the opposite of his MO. In reality, he had included footage from slaughterhouses in his video content, not to endorse cruelty, but to shed light on the realities of the meat industry. Unfortunately, the automated bots who assessed his videos seemed to misinterpret his intent, leading to the termination of his channel. Fortunately, he would find a multi-channel network, a conglomerate that comes to the aid of creators facing strikes and channel terminations. Typically, the way these networks work is that in exchange for a percentage of your YouTube revenue, they give you a bunch of promises and typically don't deliver very much. But in this case, Richard managed to find one that provided him essential support. This network that he joined not only helped reinstate his channel within just one month, but also supposedly boosted his content in the algorithm. Just a month after his termination, Richard found himself back in the game, with his monthly ad revenue remaining steady, and no significant sacrifices made to reclaim his channel. In April of 2019, a somewhat smaller controversy involving Richard emerged, this time involving fellow YouTuber Onision. To provide some context, Richard and Onision had a brief feud earlier centered around a live stream debate on the ethics of veganism versus vegetarianism. Such disagreements were routine for Richard, given his history of debating various individuals on the platform. But this particular controversy in 2019 took a much different turn. It all began when Onision initiated a GoFundMe campaign seeking financial support for a child in need of funds to cover alleged hospital bills. He reached out to several creators, including Vegan Gains, albeit in a private manner, through direct messages. Richard decided to examine the GoFundMe campaign closely. He noticed what he saw as various discrepancies between the names associated with the GoFundMe account and those links to the mother's Twitter account, among other suspicious details. Unconvinced by the campaign's legitimacy, Richard responded to Onision's DM by basically asking him why he was willing to raise money for a little girl, but not go vegan in order to save animals. <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is so funny, man. Onision countered, persistently requesting a donation. This prompted Richard to reiterate his doubts about the campaign's authenticity while reinforcing his argument. Onision then responded by insinuating that the little girl's life held more value than that of any cow or chicken. Richard, in his characteristic edgy manner, replied by asking, but where will the worms and maggots get their protein if they can't eat her dead rotten corpse? Unsurprisingly, this remark infuriated Onision, leading him to create a video titled, I can't believe someone would say this, in which he elaborated on the drama and passionately defended the value of this girl's life. So then, Richard posted his own video, clarifying that he had never intended to donate due to his suspicions about the campaign's legitimacy. He explained that the point he aimed to make wasn't about equivalence, but about acknowledging his own hypocrisy and advocating for saving the girl's life while not adopting a vegan lifestyle. Cows and chickens are being horribly abused, mistreated, and eventually killed in these industries, and Greg has absolutely no problem supporting that, but he wants to virtue signal to us all that he cares so much about this little girl. Well, okay, if you care so much about the sanctity of life, then why do you not put in the small amount of effort required to just not eat these products? If you want milk, cheese, eggs, then why can't you just make a vegan alternative? It's because you're a selfish, lying sack of sh and the only reason you shared this GoFundMe campaign, the only reason you're trying to slander me in this video is because you only care about yourself and you're coming up with any lies and bullshit you, that just pops into your head so that you can maybe uh, stop losing subs so quickly.
And to be honest, I don't even know what to say to this. Like, I, I have, I've almost never heard someone say something so wild on YouTube. Vegan Gains is one of the most entertaining people of all time. As for any subsequent response videos, if they exist, they seem to have disappeared into the annals of internet history, implying that the controversy likely concluded. It's important to note that any traces of edginess associated with Richard were confined to Twitter and not presence in his YouTube response video. The shift in demeanor was likely influenced by the recent termination of his channel, leading him to really tone down everything. Even though Richard has started to veer away from his edgy persona, he wasn't entirely done with it. In the early months of 2020, he released a video titled Eddie Hall vs. Vegan Gains. In this video, he adhered to his well-established routine of critiquing bodybuilders for their dietary choices, the supplements they endorsed, and various other aspects of their lifestyles. However, it was during this video that he did something that would incite a significant amount of anger and backlash from viewers. About halfway through the video, Richard stumbled upon a Facebook post made by Eddie Hall in which he shared his experience visiting a child with cancer. Richard decided to read the post's concluding sentences in a very mocking voice. Cancer is an almighty killer and I wish there was a cure for it. I for one will be supporting Team Lewis in the future and hope you guys will too. One day, cancer will be a thing of the past and the memory of Lewis will live on in the cure when it's found. Well, Eddie, since we're still waiting for that cure for cancer to be found, how about in the meantime we try and prevent ourselves from developing cancer in the first place? Uh, you eat red and processed meat all day, which is classified by the WHO as a cancer-causing carcinogen, doesn't really make sense for you to eat these foods and promote these foods if you care so much about cancer. And on top of that, you're talking sh about vegan and vegetarian diets. Oh, they're so yucky and disgusting. Oh, I hate it. Well, guess what? Vegans and vegetarians have a lower risk of cancer. This action triggered a big wave of outrage, leading to an overwhelming barrage of dislikes on the video. It became abundantly clear that a large portion of the audience vehemently disagreed with Richard's approach. Richard, in his defense, contended that he wasn't mocking the child with cancer. Instead, he argued that the target was Eddie Hall himself, who he accused of exploiting the child's illness for views and attention, despite Eddie's charitable contributions to cancer foundations. On his professional Facebook page, he was promoting this fundraiser for a child who has cancer. Now, to me, it seemed as though he was exploiting the situation and this kid so that he could make himself look better. And he didn't really care about this kid with cancer. That was just what I thought. I could have been wrong, not saying I'm right, but that's what I thought. I guess a lot of people would say like, well, even if he is exploiting him, I mean, the kid still gets benefit, you know, if he raises money for him, yeah. right? Yeah, but that's not, that wasn't really my area of concern. My concern was this guy is exploiting somebody who is going through something bad for his own benefit, even if it benefits the person ultimately. And people turned that into, oh, you're making fun of a kid with cancer. No, I was criticizing somebody who I thought was taking advantage of a kid with cancer. While Vegan Gaines maintained that he was critiquing Eddie Hall's intentions rather than the kid, the video's execution didn't sit well with many viewers, ultimately resulting in this incident going down in history as one of the most infamous moments in Vegan Gains' online reputation. During this period, the Vegan Gains channel was continuing to experience a decline in terms of views and subscribers. However, it wasn't long before one incident would send him right back to the spotlight of mainstream controversy. On March 26, 2020, a YouTuber known as Penguin Zero or Charlie took center stage by posting a commentary video criticizing the mukbang YouTuber So Young for a disturbing practice. So Young had gained notoriety for consuming animals while they were still alive. Charlie's video on S served as a scathing critique of her actions and the ethical concerns they raised. Charlie's main arguments in the video were quite straightforward, but very impactful. He decried the act of consuming animals while they were alive, highlighting the cruelty and inhumanity of such a practice. What added a layer of concern to this controversy was So Young's choice of octopuses as her subjects. These creatures were well documented as very intelligent beings, capable of intricate behaviors. Yet, they were subjected to this horrifying consumption on camera, struggling desperately to escape her mouth. The creatures she chooses to eat alive are the ones that are well documented in being very much aware and alive. For example, the octopus. Octopus are among the most intelligent creatures we have on the planet. They're up there with dolphins. They have a fully complex nervous system, brain. They have as many neurons as dogs do, and they process pain and information in much the same way a dog does. They're able to remember that kind of information as well. So how does she treat an octopus? 
well, by devouring it alive as it tries its best to run the f away. Furthermore, Charlie expresses dismay at So Young's constant style, marked by constant screaming and grotesque scenes. This style left him deeply disturbed and uneasy, unable to comprehend how such content could garner a massive audience. As is often the case with critical videos on YouTube, Charlie's expose received an overwhelming response. It quickly accumulated 9 million views, resonating with a wide audience that shared his concerns about the treatment of animals and the ethics of creating content around such practices. Now, if you've been paying attention at all, I don't think it needs to be said what Richard's reaction to this video was, so let's get into his response, which he published on April 16th, 2020, about one month later, titled Penguin Zero the Arch Hypocrite. Surprisingly, instead of launching into his typical fiery tirade, Richard actually extends a fair amount of credit to Charlie. He acknowledges Charlie's commendable act of calling out a content creator who was clearly in the wrong. Good on uh, Penguin Zero for, you know, making a video uh, like this. I'm really glad to see big uh, YouTubers, people with a lot of reach and influence, make videos about animal cruelty, but I was really sad to see that only a few, uh, few weeks after Penguin made this video, he uploaded a video where he supported animal cruelty. He made a sausage making video. It actually wasn't Charlie's initial video that got Richard all riled up. It's what came afterward that truly angered him. Charlie, in a subsequent video, decides to embark on a culinary adventure involving sausage making. Now, here's where Richard takes issue. In this sausage making endeavor, Charlie employs using sausage casings, which are traditionally crafted from animal intestines. That's where Richard calls him out, saying that he's a hypocrite. He argues that Charlie's use of sausage casings contradicts his earlier stance on animal welfare. While Charlie had rightfully criticized So Young for her treatment of octopuses, Richard contends that Charlie, in using animal-derived casings, as well as eating meat in general, indirectly supports the suffering of pigs through the meat industry. Richard goes on to underline the intelligence of pigs, asserting that they're on par with, if not more intelligent than dogs, a point which is supported by scientific studies. He firmly believes that Charlie could have explored alternatives. According to Richard, there are numerous plant-based sausage casings available, and Charlie could have even tried his hand at crafting them at home by following online tutorials. The same logic applies to the chicken that made its appearance on Charlie's video. Vegan Gaines' response to Charlie's video undoubtedly stirred the pot, and the dislike bombing that ensued was, in all likelihood, a result of Charlie's significantly larger audience. This sparked a controversy that Critical himself couldn't resist addressing, and he promptly released a video just a day later. In it, he began by expressing his genuine surprise at how Richard had mellowed out over the years. He recalled his more aggressive approach back in 2016, and contrasted it with the comparatively subdued tone of his recent response. Charlie found this shift quite refreshing and welcomed the fact that Richard was now delivering his criticism in a much tamer manner. That said, Charlie did not let Richard off the hook. He acknowledged that everyone is entitled to their own opinions, and he considered Richard's perspective a valid one. However, he still had some issues. His first point of contention was that, despite Richard's improved demeanor, he still believed that vegan gains represented some of the less favorable aspects of the veganism community. This opinion stemmed from the way Richard often employed insults when addressing others. Charlie then delved into the core of the matter, the comparison between him and So Young. He asserted that the comparison wasn't fair, as his primary concern was the way animals were killed. If if, for instance, the place Charlie sources chicken from was engaged in the inhumane treatment of chickens when they were still alive, as opposed to employing the most humane slaughter methods, he would have a significant issue with it. But obviously, such practices were not the case in his video. Charlie also made it clear that he had no qualms with meat substitutes like Beyond Meat and similar products. In fact, he shared Richard's view that these alternatives represented the future of food. At the end, Charlie emphasized that if Richard genuinely wanted to encourage more people to adopt a vegan lifestyle, he needed to adopt a less condescending and more understanding approach towards those who consume meat. A lot of people in that community go out of their way to try and lecture people or guilt them into joining, which is the worst possible approach to take and only holds that back. The public perception of meat substitutes could be huge right now if the community as a whole didn't keep vilifying them for it. Because meat substitutes taste better. I think objectively, anyone that has had like Impossible or Beyond can say with certainty it, it really does just outright taste better. Later on that very same day, Vegan Gains released a response video, and this time around, he seemed noticeably more upset than in his previous. At the outset of his response, he revealed that he had been live streaming at the same time Charlie dropped his video. To his dismay, his chat was soon flooded with fans harassing him and even sending racial slurs his way. Richard wasted no time claiming that Charlie's community was toxic, and therefore that invalidated some of the criticisms that Charlie had made of Richard being too extreme. One of Richard's central arguments revolved around Charlie's assertion that killing animals wasn't illegal. Legal. In response, he contended that legality shouldn't be the focal point of the debate. He noted that, historically, there have been instances where actions such as owning slaves was perfectly legal, so appealing to the written law was not a compelling argument in his eyes. So, two really bad arguments here. First argument he made, he said that killing and eating animals isn't illegal. Well, what does that matter? Uh, the law doesn't determine morality. At one point, it was legal to keep slaves, and in Germany, it was legal to, to kill Jews. So, is it okay to keep slaves and kill Jews as long as it's legal? 
No. Furthermore, Richard took issues with Charlie's point about dogs. They shouldn't support the killing of any animals. To emphasize this point, Richard displayed a picture of Charlie's dog, implying that Charlie wasn't a true animal lover. Additionally, Richard challenged Charlie's argument about animals eating other animals. He asserted that Charlie's reasoning didn't hold up because if it were acceptable for animals to consume other animals, then the original So Young video, which featured her, an animal, eating an octopus, which is an animal, should be considered perfectly acceptable according to Charlie's own logic. Three days after their initial exchange, Charlie wrapped up the controversy with one final response. Right from the outset, he reiterated his earlier points about how this whole situation reflected poorly on Richard. Charlie emphasized that rather than engaging in a civil discourse free of insults, Vegan Gaines was persistently attacking him, which in Charlie's view was detrimental to the image of the vegan community. Charlie also expressed concern that Richard's confrontational approach was turning away potential converts to veganism rather than inspiring them. Charlie then delved into the heart of the matter, presenting his most compelling argument. He posed a thought-provoking question. If eating meat made him a bad person, did that also make Richard a bad person for owning an iPhone, Charlie drew attention to the well-documented issues of child labor in iPhone factories overseas, where regulations and protections are often lacking. Applying vegan gains as logic, Charlie argued that Richard's ownership of an iPhone could be viewed as supporting these unethical practices. Moreover, Charlie contended that the shirts Richard was selling might be made using cotton produced by child laborers working in difficult conditions, thereby indirectly endorsing child labor and its potential consequences. You wear a gaming headset during your streams. You realize those parts that compose that gaming headset Set, a lot of them are made in sweatshops. Very, very immoral means of getting those parts, and you're wearing it freely. So by wearing that, you're supporting that kind of terrible thing in the world. I'm of course not the only one to make this comparison, but you keep dodging it. On Twitter, a user proposed the exact same thing, and your response was, Oh, you're just re You're not nearly on the same level of intelligence that I am. You're, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm holier than thou. You're wrong. Look at Foxconn. I don't know if you're joking or if you're actually dumb, but Foxconn actually does use miners at their factories in China. They're being investigated for it. It's pretty well documented. And Foxconn's an extremely terrible place to work that's well known for workers committing suicide. So I don't know why you'd use this as an example to somehow dismiss the argument. The discussion then circled back to the previous controversy involving Richard's alleged mockery of a child with cancer. While Richard was providing his explanation, Charlie maintained that the optics of Richard's actions still appeared as if he were mocking a child with a serious illness. Charlie concluded the video series by suggesting that vegan gains was primarily driven by the pursuit of clout and financial gain. He accused Richard of seeking attention and not genuinely believing in the causes he advocated for. He also mentioned that he had considered inviting Richard to appear in a podcast, but ultimately to decided against it because he felt that Richard was more interested in attention than sincere debate. It's worth noting that the idea of making YouTube videos for views and attention isn't unique to vegan gains. It's a common motivation for every content creator on the platform. As a minority of commenters pointed out, Richard's commitment to his ideology has come at the expense of losing connections and popularity, including with someone like Critical, who de-invited him from his podcast. After Charlie's final response video had been posted, it seemed that the controversy had come to an end. Even so, Richard, true to his character, decided to offer his own response a few days later. Later. In this video, he took issue with several points made by Charlie, of course, accusing him of lying and asserting that Charlie was the one primarily motivated by financial gain, not him. One of the central themes of this video was Richard's disagreement with Charlie's argument regarding his t-shirts and their connection to the cotton industry. Richard contended that he didn't approach this issue from a consequentialist moral framework and suggested that Charlie's point was flawed or irrelevant to his view. All right, so first of all, again, this is a two quote qui fallacy. Charlie is trying to suggest that because it's wrong to farm cotton and because I support the cotton industry, therefore it's okay for him to do something else that's wrong, like eat meat. Again, this this sort of reasoning can lead to justifying anything. It could justify the cost. It could justify eating animals alive. So again, why would you end up criticizing so young when you're going to rely on this sort of logical fallacy as the basis of your argument against me? That uh, doesn't make any sense. Despite Richard's attempts to defend his stance, it seemed that the video was destined for a negative reception, much like many of the previous videos in this controversy. True to form, it received over 22,000 dislikes and was inundated with comments, most likely from Charlie's fans who disagreed with Richard's position and the way that he expressed that position. So far, we've explored various individuals critiquing Richard's views and making claims about him, but we haven't really delved into what Richard's own beliefs actually are regarding veganism. After all the criticism and debate, it's only fair to hear directly from him himself what he truly believes and why he's so passionate. Why do you feel this way about, about animals? Why do you feel like they deserve so much, so much empathy or shouldn't be killed or we shouldn't eat them when... I mean, a large portion of society, I mean, myself included, eats meat. I don't really feel bad about it. Um, well, I do feel a little bad about it, but I don't feel that bad about it. Not enough to stop eating it. Yeah, um, I don't like injustice. 
I don't like it when um, weaker people or beings are kind of like picked on. Yeah. I just don't like the idea of that. And I think that's why I have, uh, I'm especially sympathetic to animals because they have no way of even fighting back. Yeah. It's like not a, a battle they can win. Mm-hmm. And I do believe in the idea of like fundamental human rights. And I believe it, it's just a logical extension of human rights to grant human rights to animals. So I don't see a meaningful distinction between animals and human beings to where we can take away uh, animal rights and not grant them human rights. One argument I think people would make is, well, animals are far less intelligent than us. A lot of animals eat each other. Why can't we get sustenance from from those animals? Yeah, so I don't think there's any way of making a differentiation that justifies taking away animal rights with, with, without also taking away human rights. So if you're going to say intelligence is the defining factor where an, because animals are so much less intelligent, we can kill and eat them. Well, there are human beings that have comparable levels of intelligence to, say, a pig or dog, a cat or a cow. Like people so, with disabilities? Yeah, so to be logically consistent, you would have to accept the idea of of killing and eating people with disabilities, which I think would be wrong. Yeah, probably most people would disagree with that. Well, what about like, let's say a species like tigers, right? Tigers eat elk or whatever they eat. What do we do about tigers? I mean, do do we kill them? Yeah, so as long as it reduces rights violations, I'd be in favor of killing carnivorous animals. If we're gonna grant animals human rights, that means the rights would have to be protected not only from human beings, but also other animals. I guess the question would be like, so before humans, like tigers and stuff like that existed, they ate each other. And that's part of the ecosystem, like, you know, the cycle of life and death. Some animals eat other animals, some animals eat those carnivores, and eventually they die and they turn into soil for the plants or whatever, right? All that energy gets converted. Don't you think that, you know, if you were to kill tigers, then you would have a lot of, you know, potentially invasive species or just overpopulation of whatever they eat? Uh, Not necessarily. Not every ecosystem really relies on predatory animals. Uh, Yellowstone National Park would be an example. Ecosystem there was doing just fine without wolves. So, no, not necessarily. What about, what about the ones that do? Like, let's say, you know, yeah. in Africa or something. So if it were the case that if you were to kill every lion, uh, say every other species in that ecosystem would die out, then I wouldn't be in favor of killing the lions because that would just cause more death. But the lions are going to eat other animals. Isn't that a rights violation? It is, but you could consider it a greater rights violation to kill the lions if lions are absolutely necessary for every other living thing there to live. Okay. What about the fact that like, if you kill all the tigers, let's say hypothetically there was no ecological issue. I mean, then that species is, is, is extinct. We can't, you know, we don't, we don't access them anymore. They don't exist. They're gone. Is there any reservations you have about that? No, look at it this way. If Nazis were a different species uh, and they were out to kill Jews, would you have a problem with Nazis going extinct? I guess. You would? I guess I I wouldn't have a problem with them going extinct. But also to me, like a Nazi is like something you can convince out of it. Well, I mean, it's a hypothetical, but like the idea is you have a murderous sort of being that's going to keep killing throughout its entire life. Something like that shouldn't exist. What kind of responsibility do you ascribe to like a normal person who eats meat, who maybe doesn't think about it or hasn't thought about it very much? Like, do you see them as a bad person because they haven't thought about it? You see them as ignorant, uninformed, like how do you? Yeah, I just see them as ignorant and uninformed. So I don't judge people just on the basis of them eating meat. I judge people on the basis of whether they make good choices given the knowledge they have. So if you know you're contributing to animal suffering by eating meat and you're, you're killing animals animals with yeah. your food choices. If you know that, then yeah, I think you're a terrible person. Mm. If you don't and you haven't really thought about it and you're kind of indoctrinated indoctrinated into a society where this is normal, you don't know any better, right? Okay. So what would the purpose be of your YouTube channel then? Is it just to spread your ideas? Is it to have fun? Like what's the goal? Well, the goal is to turn people vegan and I know I rub a lot of people the wrong way but that's just who I am. And this is my personality. This is how I talk and do things. I think a lot of people, you know, jive with that and respect it. A lot of people don't. So um, I can't please everybody when it comes to activism and make everybody my friend. So I just be myself.
A few months after the drama with Critical, Richard took an unexpected turn by announcing that he and his wife would be opening an OnlyFans account for those interested in their content. Predictably, this move was seized upon by their detractors who promptly created various forms of content to poke fun at him. As we transitioned into the year 2021, it marks the beginning of one of Richard's most recent and substantial controversies. During a live stream, he learned about the passing of another bodybuilder, John Meadows, who had tragically died of a heart attack. Richard reacted to this news by laughing, making disparaging comments about John's child, and even expressing his desire for the child to suffer the same fate. Well, your son's a piece of fucking sh** just like you, asshole. Uh, yeah, there he is, fucking torturing animals. Yeah, putting a hook through a fish's mouth. Yeah, hopefully he dies of heart attack soon, too. His rationale for this was rooted in his disagreement with John Meadows' views on saturated fat being good for health, and he remarked that John died as he lived. Another factor fueling Richard's animosity toward John was the discovery of videos in which John expressed some level of agreement with veganism and remorse for consuming meat, yet did not make any significant changes to his diet. To Richard, this made John a hypocrite, justifying his mockery of his death. There was someone... John Meadows you're talking about. Yeah. He, he had a heart attack. He had a heart attack and died. Yeah. Okay. Why did you, I guess, laugh at his death? What about it was funny to you? Yeah, so John Meadows was promoting this idea that saturated fat is healthy. So he was claiming butter is a health food, uh, palm kernel oil is a health food, very high in saturated fat, and that you should stay away from these poly and monounsaturated plant fats. Do you think what, he, he believed that for real? Yeah, and I mean, he died for what he believed in, uh, clearly. He got so, a, he, was he young? How old was he? He was fair, like, I think he was still in his 40s when he died. So he wasn't that old. He was on steroids. I'm sure that might have contributed to it. This was also during COVID. So COVID might have also contributed to it. But he ate like shit. He ate a diet very high in saturated fat. He was also on cholesterol lowering medication. So his doctors, yeah, they knew his cholesterol was way too high. And I just thought it was funny that this guy who was promoting eating shitty foods died of, you know, the result of eating those shitty foods. On top of that, he actually agreed with the ethical principles of veganism. He made a few videos talking about how he doesn't like seeing animals killed and he feels bad about eating meat. So that also kind of pushed me in that direction of like laughing at his death. This is a guy who, even though he recognized what he was doing was wrong by his own admission, he kept doing it. And I, I don't see that sort of death as tragic. Throughout 2021, Richard engaged in increasingly heated political debates, particularly with creators associated with the Red Pill movement. Disagreements and confrontations were frequent, with debates involving figures like John Zerka and Fresh and Fit becoming noteworthy examples of Richard's confrontational political discourse. On January 1st, 2023, Richard took to YouTube to show off all of his pets, emphasizing that he had been exclusively feeding them a vegan diet. Despite the animals appearing healthy in the video, many commenters wasted no time in lampooning Richard, expressing concerns that an all-vegan diet might be detrimental to the pet's well-being, sparking yet another round of controversy surrounding his animal advocacy and dietary choices. Richard has found himself embroiled in ongoing feuds with various creators over the years, but one recent prominent figure in his online conflicts is Hamza Ahmed. Hamza, a fellow lifestyle and fitness YouTuber, promotes a carnivore diet, which stands in stark contrast to Richard's firm advocacy for veganism. Their disagreements go beyond dietary choices, though, extending to the realms of religion and atheism, with vegan gains firmly aligning himself with veganism, and Hamza taking the opposite stance. In Richard's view, Hamza is a habitual liar who fails to substantiate any of his claims with scientific evidence. What particularly irks Richard is Hamza's tendency to engage in subtle, humble bragging, where he inserts personal boasts into discussions that have little relevancy to the topic at hand. For instance, Hamza might discuss his romantic conquest while discussing entirely unrelated matters, a habit that has fueled Richard's growing resentment towards him. Obviously, we don't have to go over all of them, but what would be like the top one guy that you think sucks in the fitness community that you like to talk about? Um, probably Hamza. Hamza. Hamza Ahmed. You've been talking about him a lot. He's um sort of a red pill, Sneeko-ish guy. Yeah, he doesn't like calling himself red pill, but he's essentially part of the red pill community, maybe more specifically the male self-improvement community. What do you see as bad about Hamza? Just about everything. He's incredibly ignorant. A lot of the advice he gives is either dead wrong, misleading, inaccurate. He does not say anything that's remotely close to being supported by science. He's dishonest. He lies a lot. So yeah, uh, there's a number of reasons why I don't like him. Is there like a specific thing that pissed you off about him at first or something that you could name right now that like would be like, oh, this sucks? 
Yeah, he makes it up. He'll make up stupid stories um, and relate it to, I don't know, some sort of moral that he believes in. But he he likes to do things like humble brag and say, you know, I really support marriage and, you know, not being promiscuous, being in a committed relationship. And then he and then he'll say things like I broke up with this girl and I was so sad. So I like all these women and I had like all these threesomes and oh I was so degenerate like he didn't do that no he it's again it's an intentional humble brag to say oh I had sex with so many women but don't do that that's bad recently vegan gains has significantly increased his presence on channels like destiny where he frequently engages in conversations often revolving around veganism or broader political subjects that Richard is passionate about these interactions have produced numerous entertaining and sometimes contentious clips with some portraying Richard in a less than flattering light you can eat lobsters too just a chain of ganglia's no, no central true. brain. No, lobsters have a brain. Uh, lobster brain. So they do have a brain. The lobster nervous system is very primitive, uh, most similar to a nervous system of an insect. They literally are insects. But um, <laughs> lobsters and other invertebrates have only approximately 100,000 neurons, while humans have over 100 billion. They do have a brain and nervous system, and there is actually, <laughs> what um, the I think- there was a big paper published proving that they do they do feel pain and they um, at least have conscious experiences. Another huge hit is probably the swaggiest rap song I've ever heard in my life. Take a listen, folks. This is another public service announcement. You can believe it or you can doubt it. Let us begin with the cow, the way it gets to your plate and how. Cow doesn't grow fast enough for man, so through his greed, he makes a faster plan. He has drugs to make the cow grow quicker. Through the stress, the cow gets sicker. 21 different drugs are pumped into the cow in one big lump. So just before it dies, it cries. In a slaughterhouse full of germs and flies, off of the hand, they pack it, drain it, and can't. <laughs> Nevertheless, Richard continues to live stream, remaining unafraid of diving into disputes with others, ensuring that his online presence remains alive. As time marches on, it's clear that Vegan Gains' his propensity for online arguments and debates shows no signs of subsiding. His streaming endeavors and confrontations with content creators will probably persist forever, but it is worth noting that his content has been toned down quite a bit with the current age of YouTube. Not to say he stopped his comments altogether. Uh, I stand by what I said, uh, if not more so. Don't think he was a good person. I... Glad the guy's dead. Uh, he was knowingly and willingly harming animals when he knew it was wrong. So good. One less animal abuser left alive. But even with all that being said, most of what I've gone over here is publicly available information about Vegan Gains. As I said, I managed to physically meet Vegan Gains in person and film him over the course of two days. So, what is the internet's most psychotic vegan like in real life? Today, we are meeting with psychotic vegan YouTuber, Vegan Gains. I fucking hate children. Someone please keep me home. I'm honestly kind of nervous to hang out with him today because he says crazy stuff. Probably never gonna find someone quite like him online. I'm just personally very excited to film with him and see what's up. Hopefully make a good video. Hopefully not end up in the hospital or worse because he's he's big. Like people, I don't think people realize how big he is. He's like six foot two, three maybe, and like 250 pounds. He's just giant. He's massive. It's horrifying. I'm a little bit nervous, not gonna lie, but it should be. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. What kills you is probably named Vegan Gains, right? Meeting Vegan Gains was unlike meeting anyone I've met before in my life. He is awkward, but he's not particularly intimidating or confrontational like you may expect from his videos. Instead, he honestly seems pretty shy, like not actually greeting you when you meet him or shaking your hand. He didn't directly disrespect me or anything like that. I think he's just, you know, awkward. He's weird. I don't like infant children, though. Yeah, they scare me. They scare you. Yeah. They scare. I, I never understood the baby thing. I thought it was like a joke at first because I saw the, the video. You'd be like, I want to put my foot through the front. Yeah, I don't hate children, but they scare me. They scare you. I don't know. They have like big eyes, weird smooth heads, creepy little toes and fingers. <laughs> what is the age cut off for like now they become tolerable? Like, um, I used to work at a hockey camp and uh, I had like some kids who were six and older who were pretty cool. I don't know how intentional it was, but I definitely felt like he owned me by pulling up and a green motorcycle and demanding that I sit in the sidecar. Over text, I actually suggested that I could drive my car, but he was like, oh, no, 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 Tom, listen, you'll love the sidecar. 
Anyway, we went to the gym, and that's when I realized how truly big this guy is. It's also probably worth noting that Richard has an OnlyFans. I was a little confused about what he was doing there. Well, thankfully, in the locker room, okay, not, not like that, he informed me that he just likes playing with his ding-dong on video. Not mine. Have you considered doing- Bruh. Huh? Have you considered doing, like, actual- Bruh. Well, like I do do full news and, and play with my ding dong on camera, so it's like actual bruh. <laughs> one of the strongest points that Critical or Charlie made against Richard was that vegan gains will, on one hand, condemn animal products and wish that anyone who consumes them would slip on a karmic banana peel, but he doesn't seem to take issue with computers and iPhones, both of which have had scandals around the poor condition of their workers and unsafe production lines. Made that video addressing a controversy, talking about the video vegan gains made about me, calling me a hypocrite for eating meat. You wear a gaming headset during your streams. You realize those parts that compose that gaming headset, a lot of them are made in sweatshops. People talk about child <laughs> slaves working for computer companies. How do you kind of, I guess, rationalize that in your mind? Uh, like computers, like maybe in uh, mining of like rare earth minerals. Elon Musk, shout out. Yeah. yeah, you don't know what's going on in the supply chain and buying a computer isn't necessarily unethical. There's a way to somehow prevent buying a computer that used slave labor, obviously I would. But when it comes to animal products, you know it's necessarily required. Every to animal abuse. product. Yeah, every single animal product, it's necessarily required to abuse an animal. And the abuse to you is, is the killing as well. I would say murder is abuse. Like a lot of people say like humane, there's like humane animals that are raised and killed, right? Yeah, I mean, you could in theory raise an animal humanely, but you can't humanely murder. I don't think there's such a thing. We see a bicep flex we can gain? Yeah, sure. That's crazy. <laughs> are you sure you only eat soy? Yep. You ever seen a soy boy like this? Two chicken saves. Just save two chickens. This guy's very big. Even on camera, it might not show up, but he's huge. One cow saved. Two cows saved. Three cows saved. We're about to save the whole family. Four cows saved. Five cows saved. Call, we can do six. Six cows saved. He's going for seven. Seven cows saved. Eight cows saved. Their families were screaming in agony. The cows were going, no! He saved them. They're fine. Like one plate, maybe? How many? No, I think a 25 and a 10. Okay. He just little bro'd me. He just said, no way, little bro. <laughs> no way, little bro. If I get cancer, will you make a video? Actually, I'll give you permission if I get cancer to make a video laughing about my death, because I eat meat. Can you do that, like, honorarily? I'll do that for you. Okay, thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> Despite leaning left politically, Vegan Gaines stated that he's never voted in a primary election. And personally, he does not put a lot of stock in the Democratic Party. In fact, in the next Canadian election, he apparently plans to vote conservative. I haven't voted yet in a federal election. I'm probably gonna go vote conservative this time though. So the Liberal Party and the NDPs are just completely and utterly ineffective. The best chance to solve major issues like housing is gonna be voting conservative because the Liberals aren't doing anything and neither are the NDPs. NDPs. You can't get anywhere with liberals and NDPs, so it's like, okay, I'll take a chance with conservatives, right? We're currently lifting the door to let the chickens release from the chicken factory. What kind of metal? All sorts of stuff, Ramstein, Metallica, Poopy Doop, a lot of different bands. Poopy Doop? Yeah, a lot of different bands. Wait, you just make that up? Yeah. Is that a joke? Like Death Clock, I like Death Clock. Wait, Poopy Doop's not real, right? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like Ding Dong. Yeah. You listen to Poopy Poop while playing with your Poopy Doop while playing with your Ding Dong. Yeah. You didn't even laugh at your own joke. It's hard to make me laugh. Is it? Yeah. Can your wife make you laugh? Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poopy doo. I was on the phone with a Tyson guy before I came to the gym. He said if Vegan Gaines can't do six on his last set, they're all gonna die. I'll have to kill him. <laughs> to kill. If it was legal, would you? Yes. Like which, would it be like any meat eater or like specific meat eaters? Anybody who'd refuse to stop. So would you like vegan. capture them at gunpoint? Yeah. Yeah, I try to convince them if they refuse, then you know, bang. <laughs> <laughs> like the Punisher. Yeah. What would your superhero name be? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, like vegan. The vegetable. The vegetable. <laughs> the vegan crusader. Yeah, or cat dad. Cat dad, that's a good one. Yeah. Veggie boy. How do you feel about pescatarian? That's what I think. Well, they're eating fish, right? And they still eat like dairy and eggs. You told me something to the effect of like having traits of antisocial personality disorder. Yeah. What traits would those be? Sadism. Would you like to be held down and get your head cut off with an <laughs> lack of empathy for other people? But you have high empathy for animals and stuff. Yeah, like that. I have high empathy for animals, and I'm also like not manipulative. Like I can just absolutely beat the <laughs> somebody, sleep like a baby, not think about it. I grabbed the kid's neck, and I was about to try to kill him. Have you beat the to someone? Yeah. You seriously hurt them? Yeah. I lent him some video games and he sold them and he also kicked his dog, so. I saw him outside his apartment oh, smoking okay. and then I just beat the out of him. Punched him in the face, kicked his ribs. 
Did you like the taste of meat or no? Not really. I always liked vegetables and fruits as a kid. I just ate meat because I thought you needed to for like health and building muscle. And All right, we're gonna get changed. We'll meet you back at the house. Yeah, that was a really good workout. You guys know that post-workout feeling? I'm trying to smell the inside of the home. No, I just, my nose is congested, so we're trying to breathe through it. What do vegans eat, like corn and beans? Just about anything that's edible, as long as it's a plant. Oh, it's a plant? Yeah. It's a little rough though, sometimes it doesn't get boring, the diet? No. Not at all? Uh, there's just about every option available, yeah, especially when we go out to uh, Tenon or VHA. You want to go to one of those places? Yeah. I wouldn't mind going to Tenon, honestly. Place yeah, Tenon's great. Vegan Japanese food? da 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 <laughs> That's a little racist, I guess. Just a little bit. This is such a <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's like, you know, close. Like, location. They're all Asian. No, I try to avoid that stuff so I don't have to confront the potential moral complications that come from my lifestyle. Well, you're gonna have to confront them today. I'm gonna confront them today. Yeah. All right, we all ready to go? How do you feel about living in Canada in general? Do you have any reservations about it or? It's cool just it? um, cold that really gets to me. Just the winters can uh, kind of suck ass. Yeah, I noticed a lot of people here have complaints about Trudeau and just the government in general. Do you like Trudeau? Do oh, you I feel hate about him. it. Why is uh, that? I hate his guts. He is completely and utterly useless. He's taken away our rights to bear arms and everything with him's for show. Richard also has a strong belief that veganism should supersede a lot of other issues, such as intersectional feminism. He doesn't straight up put those beliefs down, but at the same time he expresses concern that feminists will often get in the way of other important issues like veganism when they're supposed to be talking about veganism. The issue I have with intersectional feminism with regards to vegan activism is these people will prioritize human rights issues over animal rights issues. I've literally seen them go to animal rights protests and then talk about how Native Americans were mistreated. Why the hell are we there? We're vegan activists. Animals are the most uh, marginalized group on the planet. And then, you know, they're talking about Native American genocide and shit. You know, it's fine. There's a place for that. It doesn't really belong in vegan activism. Do you think that there is, like, ethical farming that goes on? Yeah, in theory. So, again, if you have rescued animals, when it comes to a cow, that would be a little difficult. You mean like to use it for milk or something? Yeah. Yeah, so again, like the issue is, you know, possible exploitation. Like milk is meant for baby cows. At a lot of these uh, places that you can buy hens from, they only will rent out these animals. So you'll pay like a lease, and then once they stop laying eggs, you send them back and then they're just killed. Right, is the genetic engineering on these animals pretty crazy? Well, it's just selective breeding. Okay. Yeah. So they'll take one that is bigger, and then they'll breed it with one that's bigger, and then... Yeah, basically, so on, so on. that's basically the idea. And you know, a decent question would be, what is the purpose of your life? I mean, if, if... Purpose of my life? Yeah. Well, I'm an existential nihilist. I don't think there's such a thing as purpose. I think the idea of purpose is subjective. As far as myself, like, my ultimate goal is just to be peaceful and happy. Do you think we'll ever live in a world where we don't eat animals? Yeah, I think so. And I think it's very likely to happen within our lifetime. Interesting. So you think within, like, 50 years we might be Yeah, I, I think that's uh, quite plausible. Why did you switch that? Because I know videos used to be the bread and butter of your channel. A number of reasons. I have kind of a sick sense of humor, maybe some people would say, or an edgy sense of humor. Hi, guys! So a lot of my videos would get demonetized. Uh, some of them would get me, like, community guideline strikes. More kind of a... Uh more chilled out, less angry. Cause I feel like back I to like have. 2016 to 2018, like yeah. the clips were crazy. When I see babies in a commercial, I start to gag. These days, like you'll get one once in a while, but it's not so much, you know? Yeah, I have dealt with a lot of my anger issues. I have gotten a lot more calm. It took a lot of practice, a lot of mindfulness training. My uh, anger was really out of control. But there was one clip where you uh, you were challenging someone to meet you, and I think you said you were gonna you were like gonna beat them up at like the veggie club or something. That was a joke too. Okay. Yeah. You you weren't gonna beat them up at the veggie no. club. Is there a veggie club? No. It's uh, it was a veg fest. Oh okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Does your online behavior and stuff like your your anger at some of these people does that carry into your personal life at all? Like do you have uh you know are you are you staying up late at night thinking about Penguin Zero? No. I have 
have been doxxed once, and I know who did it. It was this uh, stupid fat kid who lived across the street from me. Oh, it was like it's someone you knew doxxed you. I didn't know him, but I knew who it was. He uh, exposed himself in the comment section. I left a comment saying, I know who the hell you are. You're that fat kid who lives across the street. And then after that, I didn't see him come outside. I used to uh. see him out front quite a bit, and then I didn't see him come outside after that. It's really, I just want to debate people like Penguin Zero. I also feel like there's a lot of potential diversification you could do through Instagram, like posting Sigma vegan edits or something. Oh, yeah. I know yeah, that stuff's kind of, it's kind of cringe, but. Yeah. Yeah, all the police in Toronto were watching my videos. Was it, like, do they hate you? Do they? I think a lot of them liked me. I, I've had a few cops come up and say that they like my videos, but I'm sure there's some that didn't. Yesterday he told me he likes the band Poopy Doopy. It's crazy. Yeah, they're not a real band. <laughs> what do you think about vegetarians? They're scum. Why are they scum? Yeah, they still support animal agriculture. So they're the same to you as a meat eater, basically? Yeah, it's pretty much the same. Mm. Probably dairy in some ways is worse because dairy cows live longer, which means they're abused for longer. And I mean, just f***ed up shit in general happens in uh, dairy farms. So uh, when a cow is producing milk, that means she gave birth. Those kids uh, like usually end up either veal. So they're like just chained, like kept in a very small confined space to be mm -hmm. used for veal or they're just killed. Damn. So yeah. I think of why you, cause like they're supposed to be given like these luxurious lives. But in the end tender. they kill well, them. Well, but they're getting a life that like- That's bull. So, Wagyu beef is just a, it's basically a breed of cow that holds much more fat than a normal cow. So you don't believe the luxurious? Yeah, that's just bull crap. Well, pescatarians, you'd say the same basically as a vegetarian. Yeah. The only way is veganism. Yeah, that's the only ethical option. You know how many people are vegan in general? Like the percent? I, I think the estimate is like 3%, something like that. That high, I don't see, I don't see expect it to be lower. How do you feel about uh, zoos in general? Well, they're animal prisons. Some zoos have an important function for uh, preserving endangered species, so like uh, pandas. It's questionable, the type of care they get. What about, um, let's say like owning a pet, like a bird or something, or a snake that is, I mean it's in an enclosure, but it probably has decent treatment. How do you feel about that? Like, so I believe in adopting, not shopping. So if you're buying a pet, I think you're putting them in a situation where they're getting bred into existence, where they are gonna be in a confined space and probably not living necessarily ideal lives. I think there's anything unethical about like you owning a pet? Like do you think maybe a dog would be happier if it was free? Well, no. The dog wouldn't be happier if it's it was, if it was free because it'd probably be dead. It'd probably get eaten by coyotes or something. Because it's or stars. Because it's domesticated, is that what? Yeah, one? they're domesticated. They're not used to living in the wild, stuff like that. And again, uh, if you adopt these animals <coughs> and attempt to give them the best quality of life they can while not having them harm other animals, I think that's ethical. You can definitely tell Richard has spent a lot of time talking about veganism because he has an answer for literally everything. He even supports getting rid of carnivorous animals like tigers from the wild because they eat other animals, which he considers to be a rights violation. However, when I brought up that it could collapse the ecosystem to get rid of these animals, he admitted that if ecosystem collapse was a major risk, then he wouldn't want to get rid of tigers and lions and other predatory animals. After we went out for sushi, we went out to a vegan bakery that Richard likes a lot, and uh, the cupcakes are pretty good. Okay. Oh, yeah. Nice to meet you, man. Yeah. What's your name? I can take a picture for you if you want. Awesome. Yeah, so of course. Cool. It's so cool. Okay, there you go. I think it's black and white, but... It's cool. Thanks so go. much. Yeah, no problem, man. Yeah, spotted a fan. You never know. Yeah. Is that, like, a frequent occurrence? Yeah. Seeing people fairly. in public? Yeah, fairly. Yeah. yeah. Kind of hard to miss. I think about your veganism. That's what I think about vegans. They can lay eggs still, because you just smush them. What kind of bugs some are of they? The eggs. Bugs in general can do that. As part of filming our video, something Rich specifically requested was that we watch the movie Dominion. It's about an hour and a half long, narrated partially by Joaquin Phoenix, star of Joker, and aims to detail the cruel conditions animals are put through in the meat industry. It's a pretty disturbing movie, to be honest. It made me pretty disgusted and somewhat emotional at points, seeing intelligent animals be treated so poorly. I mean, the conditions these animals are put in is actual, genuine torture. It actually sparked an interesting conversation between myself and Vegan Gaines, and while I don't agree with everything he says, I think his position as a vegan is one that the average person, including myself, would have a very difficult time arguing with. But of course, keep in mind, this guy has spent more than a decade thinking about veganism every single day, so he's going to be good at talking about it. Regardless, if you check out any of the streams on his channel or videos where he talks about veganism in a more nonchalant, not so aggressive, angry way, talking about, you know, putting his foot through the thing, he's a pretty intelligent, 
intelligent, interesting guy to listen to. I found myself enjoying our conversations. And that night, I ate a Beyond Burger for dinner. That being said, the next day I ate chicken and kind of forgot, so I guess I'm part of the problem, really. So here we're about to explore one of Vegan Gains' many passions. From what I understand, this is uh, one of your favorite things to do, rollerblading. Bro is huge. He's built like a Bro. Deku tree. You like Keemstar? No, not really. Why not? It's okay. You can be pretty toxic. You can be your friend. Could be. Well, actually, he did piss me off. His family runs dairy farms. How much would I have to pay you to drink this milk? I don't think you have the money, dude. If I had like a hundred thousand dollars, would you drink it? How much? Like, what's like your? Is there an amount? Yeah, in theory, like I could, you know, donate a certain amount of money to like, you know, displace. You know, offset the harm. Yeah. Like one mil. Maybe. 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 For this milk to go, look, it's vanilla. It's probably delicious. Yeah. I'm Something about that doesn't good. tantalize you? No, I don't like milk. Dairy kind of grosses me out. Bro has an answer for everything. If nothing else, I can definitely say with a clear conscience that Richard is an exceedingly honest person. Whether you think his honest self is a nut job, or he's funny, or you find him completely detestable, or somewhere in between, is up to you. But bottom line, who he is on camera is, for the most part, who he was off of it. I had a lot of preconceived notions of vegan gains when I went into this video. I thought that he was a crazed vegan who said a lot of wild stuff online for attention. And that was somewhat true. But in person, what I found was a common collected guy with a genuine passion for what he sees as animal rights. He has some unsavory moments, and I can't defend all of that. He's a very complicated person, as all people are, and even in this video, he said some crazy stuff. But I'd be lying if I said that by the end of my visit, I didn't enjoy my time with him, and honestly, I would consider Richard to be a friend now that it's all said and done. Whether you like him or hate him, I hope this video gave you a better understanding of who he is. I've been Turkey Tom, thanks for watching, and until next time, leave me alone.